How you doing there? Mike Burris here. Beautiful day today and you know we're in the evening. I just want to thank you for coming out and being part of this uh, blog community where we comment on the bottom of the page that you're seeing the full text link to. There's so much information on this page that I cannot put it on YouTube. There's just too much information. So you want to go out to the page, do your own homework. There's lots of notes, a lot of deep analysis of the original languages. And so on the bottom of this video, we comment so we can have this community where we all learn together. Go look at body ministry, but that's what 1 Corinthians 14 talks about, a lot of other verses. It's we're all weighing in together. We're all judging this thoroughly back and forth. So we are on uh, this page called, I did a lot of this a long time ago, maybe 2020, just getting around to doing the videos. We're on blog topic one, so you might want to read the introduction, right, of this uh, page before we get into these individual blog topics. So you get the overview, right? Don't lose the forest through the trees. So we got a little bit of crookedness here. There we go. This is how did the error of clergy versus laity get started? Okay, these words were created. Uh, there's a serious error we're going to find out about this. And so we're on this page called Coaches and Facilitators. It's really the New Testament uh, word tr you see in your Bible called tr uh, equippers, right? That's what we see the word, equippers. Uh, there's different groups. There's four groups that are mentioned in Ephesians 4.12. There's four groups. People call it a five-fold ministry, but again, they're not reading in their English. They're reading their English Bibles. There's 900 versions. Which one are you going to believe? First of all, five Bible colleges, I don't believe any of them because I've looked at, you know, so many different translations compared to the original Greek. Uh, none of them come close. Um, they come some better than others. English Standard Version comes closer than any that I've come across, but it, it's still off. All, I, I catch it all the time on your, my videos, you'll see. I catch it. So I, I use that as a starting point, but uh, use Bible Hub. Go look at Bible Info for the tools that I use. Uh, I've done this for so long. I use a lot of tools to verify what I'm looking at. So you can too. Um, if you're going to build doctrine uh, around a text, uh, it's called exegesis. Read the text not translations of the text and build your doctrine on the translations. That makes no sense, you know. So, you know, I do uh, that often because this uh, website's mostly about anointed prophetic spontaneous music. So go look at those pages. But let's get into this topic. So we are not going off on tangents, right? Doctrines of demons and also doctrines of men. Um, Paul says and to Timothy, watch out. That's what's going to happen in the latter times. And he, it didn't take very long. <laughs> So I'm a real student in history, so I'll bring that in so you can uh, learn this for yourself. But you can really just chase all this down yourself. I'm just starting the conversation. You continue it down on the bottom. And look all this stuff up. So follow the link out to the page. The idea, and I'm, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to give me new stuff. This is a lot of this stuff's two years old or, old, or older. You know, I went to five Bible colleges, straight A's in all of them, valedictory in one of them. So I'm going to try to give you some benefits from that. But go look at Bible info. The idea of clergy and laity was borrowed. It was borrowed. Originally, it was borrowed from the Old Testament. That's where they got it, which is the faulty foundation of the Great Wall. I reference this, this thing called the Great Wall. It's a whole page that you can look at this, this idea of borrowing. Where does all these uh, really lame brain ideas come from? It comes from, you know, you can read it in the church fathers. They come up with these, this justification 
uh, almost every single time, which is ironic, <laughs> they're borrowing from the Old Testament. So go look at this page called the Great Wall. And it quenches the Holy Spirit in the church, right? The New Covenant, go look at that page, is nothing completely different in kind. By definition, in every place it talks about the New Covenant than the Old Covenant. It doesn't share anything from the Old Testament. You can't borrow anything from the Old Testament if it's going to be the New Covenant. So you go look at the New Covenant. The term clergy means, quote, a group ordained to perform. That means assigned. They were assigned by somebody else. A group ordained to perform pastoral and sacerdotal dotal, uh, sacraments, uh, dotal functions in a Christian church. But this is, was first used in the 13th century. Wow. Pretty, pretty long after Christ and the apostles, don't you say? By the Catholic Church. Voila, now we know the source. But they borrowed the idea from a Greek word called clerikos, which means, quote, an inheritance, a reference to the fact that the Old Testament Levitical priests had no inheritance except the Lord. So they were given a portion of the sacrifices, etc. God provided for them. That's Old Testament. Hello. The Catholic Church had to come up with a term for the non-clergy or common people. So they invented the Latin word. They literally invented the Latin word laity in the 15th century. So this is 200 years later. I mean, this is crazy, which again, now get this, is borrowed from the Greek. Lay. Lycos, Lycos, which simply means of the people, the people at large. So they're just borrowing from the world, they're borrowing from other languages, and so you can see the impetus from uh, for clergy and laity all comes from the Old Testament. But they borrowed stones from the world to further build the Great Wall, quenching the Spirit. So they, build the, they took the, the impetus for clergy, right? All comes from the Old Testament. And then they borrowed from the world to come up with the idea of laity because <laughs> they kind of backed themselves in a corner. They wanted priests. They didn't want every saint to be a priest. That's what the New Testament says. So they had to create the priesthood. Then they had to come up with a way to support that priesthood. Well, they just wanted money because they all uh, or called themselves priests. The people making the rules come up with a way to get more money to pay for their lifestyle. And they lived lavishly. Go look at church history. They lived high off the hog while the people were being taxed, literally, the tithe was invented, borrowed from the Old Testament, and you had if you were a faithful Catholic, you tithed, right, to the church, and that became the payment to the priests, which they invented. So it's just once you go down the slippery slope, you just keep slipping down the slope, right? One thing led to the next, which led to the next, which led to the next. So you can see this borrowing from the world. However, the fact this, the, uh, the simple fact is that Catholic priests are not Levitical priests. That is the facts, Jack. <laughs> they are not Levitical priests that have their portion or inheritance in the Lord. They created this. They created this. Oh, boy, oh boy, is God going to have some words He's going to have some words. Well, a lot of people woke up, you know, thus the Protestant Reformation. Ordination of clergy is entirely uh, an Old Testament practice. You won't find the word used once in the New Testament. However, the New Testament does speak 25 times about sanctification, consecration, or 
dedication. So you don't ever see this word ordination at all. So again, this was invented, right, by the Catholic Church. See, once you create a priest, then you got to come with this ordination. Oh my gosh. However, the New Testament does speak 25 times about sanctification, consecration, or dedication to make separate for God's sac sacred persons. And so I got a bunch of verses for that. And the result is that these ceremonially unclean and clean, uh, sorry, uncommon, right? Uncommon, sorry, didn't mean unclean. Their uncommon and clean vessels of honor are now holy. So there's use of that, right? This is the term saint used 213 times in the New Testament for all Christians. Hagios. Hagios, holy, dedicated, sanctified, consecrated for God's special purposes is the saints, which is all Christians, not just those who are deemed saints. It says that. I don't know how people get around this. Not just the practice of sainthood that the Catholic Church started in 933 AD for a select few special Christians. Oh, this is religion, folks. The New Covenant says that all Christians are part of a royal priesthood, priests belonging to the king of kings, quote, making us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father. That's what the Bible says. I don't, you know, you have to basically, to believe in religion, you have to be ignorant of the Bible. You have to be. So they translated it into Latin, and very, very poorly, by the way. A lot of mistranslation problems. And uh, go look at Bible info on translation problems. <laughs> and then they didn't teach Latin to the common people. Uh, so nobody knew what it meant. So then the church could just be in complete control. See how wise that is? If you want to be in complete control, <laughs> keep them in the dark, man. It's called the dark ages for a reason. The New Covenant said that all Christians are part of a royal priesthood, all, all priests belonging to the king of kings, making us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father. Every one of us is, has been made special. Every one of us. Oops. Try to make a correction. There he goes. Has been made special, uncommon, or a vessel of honor. There's verses for all this. There is now only one high priest, <laughs> the Lord Jesus. And yet, they, they assigned high priests, I think, in the Eastern Orthodox. And we all, we are all priests, all brethren. He just says, you're just all brethren. There are no chief priests, right? Even though the, the, the Catholic Church has kind of created those cardinals and bishops and all those people, high priests. Uh, there are no chief priests in his kingdom. Uh, Jesus warned us often about having authority over others like the Gentiles do. He warned us not to do this. It shall absolutely, he says, it shall absolutely not, in fact, be so among you. And this is this is a very powerful statement. He does this in, I think, two places, maybe three even. If the Old Testament was only a shadow of things to come, right, only a shadow. It literally is fuzzy. A shadow has no definite lines. It's just a fuzzy thing. And, and you can't tell the difference I just see this big shadow. I don't know whether it's a tree. I don't know whether... It, I have no idea what's creating that shadow. I mean, talk about fuzzy, indefinite. You can take guesses all day. Is it a sorrel cactus? Is it? You have no idea what it is. You know, you're going to base your doctrine on fuzzy shadows? Yikes. Yikes. 
He says the Old Testament was but a shadow of things to come. We are churches, you know, why are churches borrowing from it to build the Great Wall? Why are, you know, remember the Great Wall? I talked about that in this last paragraph. So why are they borrowing it to build the Great Wall? That's a really good question. That's what I have to say. The, pro, uh, the Protestant church is absolutely no better. The Protestant church is absolutely no better. <laughs> Not at all. They may not use the same terms, but they are using the same ideas. That there is a special class of Christians. The ordained professionals quote unquote, or ministry staff and the rest of the congregation is simply the corporate meeting, in quote, or congregational members, in quote. Other terms borrowed from the world. This divisiveness is still straight from the pit of hell. You know, who creates divisiveness? We're going to see this. Ministry staff. You, you should go and read Ephesians 4.12. Who are the ministers? We're going to find out. The saints. Not the equippers. It's the saints who do the work of the ministry. The equippers were only supposed to coach and facilitate, to kind of help them out, to train them. But to, to train them to do the work of the ministry. But they call them, these leaders... They call themselves the ministers. Wow! That is exactly upside down from everything we know. Go look at body ministry. I know today's churches love to also use the term leader and the terms leader and teacher. But you will see that there isn't as much solid New Testament support for this as the propaganda mills churn out at least the way most people use these terms as defined today. You know, they did not write in English. So if we have this English definition in our head, oh, this is what a leader is, and this is what a, a teacher is, and we have this from our culture, from our language, and it does not, you find out, it does not consistently cross over to the Greek terms for leader and teacher. If they're not even the same. And we'll see that. You can go look at the leader page. But here, the dictionary says a leader is a person who commands a group. Commands? What? A group, organization, or country, the principal player, the principal player, or conductor in a music group. All right. That's what a leader is. Hmm. That's not what it says in, in the New Testament. <laughs> A teacher is a person who teaches, especially in a school, a person who has an occupation, profession, or work of instructing. Giving knowledge to. Oh, is that right? Giving knowledge. Okay, well, giving knowledge to, providing with authoritative information or advice, or giving an order or command to. So is that, that's what a teacher is. Wow, that is not what it says in the New Testament. <laughs> but that's what's in our head when we read our English Bibles. We will see that only a fraction of this is in mind. Only a fraction, a very small fraction, is, is in mind in the New Testament Greek. The rest of this is borrowed from the world to build the Great Wall. It is so borrowed. It's just amazing how much we borrow. I think there's a great book called Pagan Christianity. Go, go look at it. It'll, it'll blow you away. It's like a large percentage of everything that goes on our churches is borrowed from the world. I mean, it's amazing. And this quenches the spirit in the church. So I have a reflection here. We're going to build on this a lot, so I don't have to go into it in great depth right here. 
So let's look at the future blogs here. We get a better grip. And so I have a reflection here to kind of just meditate on this, kind of see what the Lord's telling us. As Christians or Christian musicians, this blog website, uh, do we want to continue repeating the mistakes that the Catholic Church made so long ago by borrowing from the Old Covenant the idea of ministry staff or clergy? Right? It, this is invented. Versus the common people, the laity or congre congregational members. This is all terms from the world. Are we also going to think of some people as holy saints, but not all Christians? Then we would be greatly in the wrong. Are we going to also borrow definitions from the world as to what church leadership and teaching is? Instead of looking carefully at the New Testament definitions and examples, if we continue to pass on these mistakes, we aren't any different than the Jews were. Jesus is always criticizing them. Man, you are just following the traditions of men. Man, are you just following the traditions of men. They had like 800, I think they had like 1,500 years by the time Christ came on the picture. Now just think about how long that is. I think 800 years written. So we are helping, uh, we're just helping to build the Great Wall, quenching the Holy Spirit. That, that's what's happening. If we do this, we're just continuing the mess. Continuing this mess that's gone on for so long. Mess on top of mess on top of mess. It's a house of cards. So let's really dig into this and find out the truth. The truth will set us free, right? Otherwise, we're going to be in the same prison. We're going to slip down the same slippery slope, end up with the same results, the same slippery slope. It has created so many problems in church history. You cannot believe. It's depressing when you look at how one thing led to the next, which led to the next, which led to the next. Horrible sins done in the name of Christ. Horrible because they started down the wrong path and they slid all the way down to the bottom, right? <laughs> to hell, man. I mean, they did hellacious things done. And justified. All hellacious things done. Well, I look forward to your comments and we can um, learn from one another that way. That's body ministry. So go look at body ministry. So we are going to look at blog topic two next. So let's look, let's look over there next. Okay, bye-bye.